Well, here we are. Thoughts from the office. Rednecks Pride Outdoors. You know, uh, I had a good time in New York uh, last weekend. Last week. I talked to a lot of folks. Talk, talk mainly to all the old timers I've known for years. And uh, very few, if you will, well, I'm not going to say very few, but there wasn't as many new trappers there at the convention as what it used to be back in, you know, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And uh, they, my wife and I was talking, and I talked with a few other folks. You know, it's back in the early days when my kids was, you know, 8, 9, 10 years old. We would go to the, the conventions. It... Uh, there was kids running everywhere. Uh, we was young, everybody was young, and, and uh, it, it, it didn't take long for my kids to find other kids and, you know, find somebody to play with, hang out with, do whatever you want to do. So we noticed that even though there was some small kids, there wasn't the nine, 10 year old, 11 year old kids um, at the convention. My uh, grandson, my, my seven-year-old grandson, Wyatt, is excited for this November for the New Jersey Fur Harvesters Convention because he takes his bike and he rides up and down the bike, getting in everybody's way, I guess. Everybody loves him, though, I think. Uh, he's not a bad kid. He's a good kid. Uh, doesn't get in trouble. But he rides his bike, and he's talking to everybody, and, and, you know, we're keeping an eye on him. We're watching him. We're seeing where he's at. And he, he's excited about sleeping over or staying at the convention and, and just, you know, here's a seven-year-old kid just excited about it. A Dratton Convention. Now, you know, as I'm talking about this, uh, obviously you see that I'm, I'm thinking, you know, you new trappers, that's something you need to be at. You need to, to be at these conventions. The demos, you pick up ideas. The demos, you see how other people do things, quote unquote, the big names. <laughs> But the real learning from a convention doesn't happen at the demos. It happens you talking to the vendors on how their products work and why their products work. The real knowledge happens at the convention by you talking to everybody that's walking around and everybody's got their own ideas and their own mindsets and their own thought processes. That's where the knowledge comes. And that's, you know, that's where... Um, I think you newer trappers are, 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 are missing out on, on some really uh, beneficial stuff. Yeah, I know push button is there. Um, push button and the information comes up. You ask a question and there's the answer to your question. But the problem is you get a false knowledge. Not, not that the knowledge is wrong. That's, don't, don't, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you get a direct answer to the direct question that you had asked and you don't get around about to make you think about other things, to make you see other things, to make you understand other things that all combine into that. You know, I say to people all the time anymore here for New Jersey, go get the New Jersey hard copy of the, of the digest and keep it in your truck or your car. You say, why? I can just put it on my phone. I say, because the phone, when you look at it, you're getting a direct answer to what you're looking for. But when you thumb through that digest, you're seeing all the other stuff that's in there. Which makes you think about all the other stuff. I, I truly believe in today's world we are super smart. I truly today believe in today's world we are super advanced. I truly believe in today's world that we are above and beyond what we used to be, 
But I also believe in today's world, we are tunnel-minded and tunnel-visioned. And what that does is that causes problems and things we don't quite understand. And it makes it hard for us to dig in and just find out solutions. So we got two uh, conventions for the New Jersey Trapper. Uh, North Jersey, Space Farms, the first Sunday of uh, October, I believe it's the 6th. Um, that would be the NJTA Trapping Convention. It's a smaller one, but it's, it used to be really, really big. Nobody wants to go up there, but it's it's a pretty day. There's a zoo there. Take your family up there. You young you young people, you got kids at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven years old. Take your kids up there. Go to the convention and shoot over to the zoo. But at the convention you'll learn a lot of stuff. Not necessarily through the demos, but you'll learn it through the conversations that you have. The second convention we're going to have is, is the New Jersey Fur Harvesters, NJFH, uh, down here in South Jersey, down in Tabernacle, I think it is, uh, area. And uh, that's a two-day uh, convention. And uh, get your kids there. You get there. Wander around, talk, learn. You know, conventions was a tradition that we don't do no more. But they was extremely beneficial to the folks who went. I can, uh, my, my fondest memories of, of more information get, gathering was from Hughesville and Cobbleskill and places like that. Another lost tradition, extremely beneficial to the, to the new trapper and old trappers, but we don't do it anymore. We don't even talk about it anymore. You know, back, I don't know, I, I really don't know where this disappeared to, but it used to be, you know, 70s and 80s, back in the fur booms when, when, when fur was high and everybody was gung-ho and ready to go and the books, you got the books and everybody read the books and everybody talked and talked a lot. Um... August was the month to get all your gear ready. September was the month to scout. We don't scout anymore. Probably because you're deer hunting. But I, I, I remember as a young man, back in the days that I could trap, knew how to trap, and was catching a lot of fur. The reason I caught a lot of fur, the reason I did good, wasn't because I was a good trapper, it's because I did all my preseason scouting and I figured out what I needed to do, where I needed to be, and how I needed to do it. Way before the season ever started. By the time opening day came, I wasn't doing any scouting. Opening day of trapping season came, I knew exactly what I had out there. I knew exactly where I was going to go. I knew exactly what I was going to do. All new ground was first was, was scouted first in September. Like now, here it is, the fifth of September, and you're st and 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 I would start scouting now to find those early raccoon and 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 uh, fox areas because you wanted to catch all your raccoons before December first, if you could. Not all, but you had, you wanted to catch a lot. Why? Because down here in the South Jersey, it started getting cold about the middle of, of December. And and back in them days, we had a lot of snow and a lot of cold weather. So our coon did hole up a little bit. So you wanted to have all your raccoon spots ready and raring to go, ready to, to open a day came in. You boom, 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 boom. Proficient, proficient, proficient. Production, production. All right, you was getting it down. You had all your... I had all my spots where I knew the foxes were going. You know, you, you, you hear me say, 
There are a lot of places some animals will go sometimes, but there's only a few places all the animals go all the time. You don't find that out in the season. You find that out now. You find that out by going out and you scouting. Yeah, it's a lot of work, man. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss my deer hunting. Um, what do you want to be? A deer hunter or a trapper? If you want to be a deer hunter, then then I totally understand that. The other time, I was a big deer hunter, too. But I'd rather be a trapper. So you get out in September, and you do your, your, your you start your scouting. You f start finding those general hubs, those general corridors, those general travel routes. You start finding those general spots that's blocking things and, and forcing animals into one spot. That way, by October... You now have your general locations all figured out. And now you can get down into, in October, now you can figure out where you're going to be putting the sets out in another four weeks, six weeks, whatever it is. All right. You know exactly where you're going to be. You know exactly what you're going to do. You've got everything prepped and ready, and ready to roll. You see, the philosophy is this. Preseason is the time to find out where they're going. Trapping season is the time to find out what you're catching. Trapping season isn't the time to try to figure out and waste time trying to figure out where you're going to set. Trapping season, setting time, is for catching, not wondering. Cable restraints is a whole different ball game than the foot traps back in the old days. Back in the 70s and the 80s, foot trapping. Um, location, for me, for me, for me. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, but for me, foot trapping location, probably because I did it for so many years, is easier for me to see fast than uh, snare cable restraint location. Now, I didn't say it was super, super hard. I'm, you know, you're gonna see, it's gonna take me 10 seconds to figure out where I wanna put my snare. But I can still pull up in my truck, look out over an area, sitting in my truck and say, yep, there, there, and there's where I'm gonna go. Now, why do I mention that? That's what you want to drive home for your scouting. You want to be able to get yourself in a place to where you can look at a topo map, you can look at an aerial map, you can sit, for the, sit and look out the window of your truck and see the locations general where you're going to go to look for where you're going to put your cable restraints and snares. There it is, uh, man, I'm in bumper to bumper traffic, trying to get to a raccoon job. Stinking raccoon, bunch of raccoons, raccoons moved to trap. And the customer's kind of upset, not upset, but worried about the stupid raccoon in the cage trap. <laughs> Motions. Anyway, trying to get up there and I got bumper to bumper traffic. Well, you know what? I know my video is a little bit long, but you know, if you sit there and you listen to what I'm saying, and then you try to hear what I'm not saying and putting them two together, you learn a whole bunch bunch. That's how I learn. That's how I learn. Um, I don't want the whole answer. 
I want the answer to I want the answer given to me to make me think about it so I learn it if I think about it and learn it it stays in here and it's, and, it, and it's there for for a long long time if you tell me what to do with my dog on uh, TV remote brain you tell me what to do in 10 minutes from now I forgot what, what you told me to do but if I figure it out if I if I get it in that this skull of mine up here if I can get it in there I, it's locked in so challenge to you stop looking for the direct answer and start looking to figure out how you can get the answer Well, I'm going to leave it there. Right next Pride Outdoors, I'll talk to you later.